Welcome back to the channel. Today we're joined by professional photographer TK North and we'll be following him around as he shoots and edits his photos on the BenQ monitor SW271C. So Tim, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. So TK North, I'm photographer and videographer from here in Sydney. Shoot a broad range of stuff, both for my own YouTube channel and Instagram, as well as a lot of client work. I shoot portraits, weddings, and probably my real passion, which is travel and street photography. Awesome. Well, let's go shoot. Let's do it. To start off, I might even just get you to do some so it's nice and casual, just kind of walking towards me. Yeah, cool. Straight down that line. Nice. So Tim, when you're taking portraits, what are some of the main things that you look out for? Um, similar to the space we're found here, one thing I really look out for is kind of a nice background, nice leading lines or something interesting, creating kind of nice separation between subject and background is one thing I always look out for. Awesome, and we've got really good lighting in here, which is always good as well. Perhaps the most important thing, having good lighting, which is yeah. yeah, nice as well. Perfect, well let's take some portraits. Cool, let's do it. So one thing I like to do when starting out with a model shooting portraits is make them feel comfortable by doing a little bit of movement. So often I'll get them to walk towards me. So Liv, I'm gonna get you to just slowly walk towards me and I'm just gonna take a few shots. And looking back over your left shoulder. Yep, perfect. So the other thing I'm looking out for when shooting portraits is something to create a little bit of a depth in the photo. That's why I'm using kind of this rail here to create a bit of depth. I've also got a really nice background behind it there as well. So back at home now after taking a few photos at George's this morning, editing on the BenQ monitor here. And I've got some tips for editing, especially working with color. So the first tip is a pretty simple one, but perhaps one of the most important things when working with color, and that is correcting your white balance. Now, can't always trust your camera, even when it's on auto white balance. So I always recommend to go in and check your white balance. Now for me, the easiest way to do this is first by just bringing your sliders a little bit either direction, just to see how that affects the image. See if it looks better or worse in your opinion and then decide on which white balance looks best for that particular image. Another way to do this is to use the selector tool. You can find a part of your image that has a nice neutral color like a white area of the photo. Then use the selector tool to click on that area of the photo. It will automatically adjust your white balance based on that selection. So this is really handy as well. If you need to, you can go in and make some simple adjustments afterwards. So my second tip is using the color selection tool in the HSL tab. You can use this both for saturation, hue and luminance. For me, I find this really great for making subtle adjustments to your colors, especially working with skin tones. For instance, if your skin tones were looking a little bit strong, you go into saturation, use your selector tool, just drag down by clicking on the skin tones and that will just reduce your overall skin tones a little bit. In the same way, you can use this for hue. Come over to hue, do the same thing, and just slightly change your skin tones in either direction, more towards red or more towards yellow, orange, depending on what you think suits those particular skin tones. You can do this for all colors. So if I wanted to reduce the green in this particular image, I could just drag down as well in there in saturation and just reduce the green in the overall image. So this is really handy when working with color for just making those adjustments just by selecting part of your image or part of a color on screen. Awesome, so we've shot outside, we've got our photos and we're ready to edit. How important is it to have a good quality monitor? Hugely important and it's also really important that you have a colour accurate monitor which is probably the most important thing for me and making sure that is properly calibrated as well. Okay, awesome. So I know you've been playing with the BenQ monitor for about a week now. How was it? It's been amazing. Like I had a decent monitor but the BenQ monitor is a huge step up from what I was using and definitely don't think I'll be able to go back. And what are a few points that you would look for if you were just starting out and you're wanting a new monitor? 
a couple of things I'm looking out for when I'm looking at monitors. Firstly, of course, color accuracy. So I guess starting out at least having kind of a broad coverage of sRGB color spaces. If you're looking for something a little bit better, having Adobe RGB coverage as well, which this monitor has amazing coverage for both ranges. Also the size, so 27 inches, pretty perfect for me, especially if you're thinking about using a second monitor. It's big enough, but not too big that you can still add in a second monitor if you like. The other one for me is having USB-C power. It just makes it so much more convenient. And again, it's something I had on my old monitor. Can't really go back to without it. It just means less cables and much needed desk when you only have one cable to plug in and charge your laptop. So my third tip is another pretty simple one, but one I use all the time, and that's using the reference view in Lightroom. So this reference view allows you to use a photo from the same collection or one of your older photos, or even a photo from someone else that you want to look at while you're editing as a reference. So this is really handy for matching up colors, or if you're going uh, for a particular style or mood, you can use a reference photo to try and match that up. So this is something that I do all the time to make sure photos are consistent and have a similar feel to them. And you can do this simply by selecting the photo you want to use as a reference, and then just drag it up to the left there on the reference view. Then when you come over and start editing your photo, you always have your reference image there to look at while you're editing. So are there any other key features that stood out to you and made your life a little bit easier while you were editing? Yeah, for sure. Probably the biggest one was the hotkey puck, which kind of allows you to switch between different color spaces just with the click of a button. So editing a wedding, I was flicking back between Adobe S sorry, Adobe RGB and sRGB a lot just with the click of the button, which is really, really convenient. Perfect. Thank you so much, Tim, for coming along today. I've loved hearing all of your tips and tricks. Make sure you do follow Tim for more photography related videos. And if you did want to check out our full review, we'll leave it in the description below. If you did like this video, make sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video.